Yo everybody, hi, good day. I am Jever and together with Eloisa, we will be talking about the structure of the language system. Let's go on and here this is the introduction. I will not be dwelling a lot of time for this, but I just want you guys to know that this chapter examines how the components of the language system relate to one another. In particular, it will look at how different types of word recognition and production interrelate, okay? So also, by the end of this chapter, just look at this. These are the things that we hope you could understand and know and also appreciate by the end of this chapter in book. Yeah. So let's just go on. I would like to start with what are the modules of language? When we see or hear or produce a sentence, we have to recognize or produce the words and decode or encode the syntax of the sentence. All of these tasks involve specific language modules. The initial processes are data-driven. Little is known at present about the relation between the syntactic encoder and decoder. Although the evidence described in chapter 12 uh, I would like you to refer to the, the book, the PDF for the chapter 12. Uh, it suggests that they are distinct. The semantic conceptual system is responsible for organizing and accessing our world knowledge and for interacting with the perceptual system. The meanings of words can be connected together to form a propositional network which is operated on by schemata and the conceptualizer. Neuropsychological case studies show us that brain damage can affect some components of language while leaving others intact. We have seen dissociations in reading and speech production. Some patients have preserved lexical access but impaired syntactic processing, while others show the reverse pattern. The pattern of performance of people with Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease is quite different, suggesting that specific instances are stored in the mental lexicon in one part of the brain, while general grammatical rules are processed elsewhere. That's it. Let's go on with the differences between visual and spoken word recognition and comprehension. First, we have phonological recording or recoding in reading. It is unlikely to be obligatory to gain access to the meaning in languages with a deep orthography that have many regular words such as English. Temporal demands of spoken and visual word recognition are very different. In normal circumstances, we have access to a visual stimulus for much longer than an acoustic stimulus. We can backtrack while reading, but we are unable to do this when listening. So here we have the differences between the modalities and it makes them beyond word recognition. We have Kennedy and Moray, Jennings and Reed. They argued that parsing differs in the two modalities. With written language, we have the, the 420 or 420, the, the psychology of language, opportunity to go back to it but access to spoken language is more transient. The differences are limited. However, Watt and Moray found that prosodic information made no difference to the way in which we parse ambiguous sentences. Mm -hmm. So next, let's talk about how many lexicons are there. So here the most parsimonious arrangement is that there is only one there's only one lexicon used for the four tasks, which are reading, listening, writing, and speaking. Alternatively, we may have four lexicons, one each for the task of writing, reading, speaking, and listening. It is also plausible that there are two lexicons. One possibility is that there are separate lexicons for written, visual language, and spoken or verbal language each cover input and output tasks, that is, the recognition and production. And another, that there are separate lexicons for input and output, each covering written and spoken language, okay? So next, let's talk about, oh, 
the neuropsychological data relevant to lexical architecture and a model. At the heart of the model is a system where word meanings are stored and that interfaces with the other cognitive processes. This is the semantic system. The four most important language behaviors are speaking, uh, listening, reading, and writing. Speaking involves going from the semantic system to a store of the sound of words or to store the sound of words. This is the phonological output lexicon. Failure to access items in one modality only would then result in a failure of mapping from lemmas to modality-specific representations of incoming speech in order to access a representation of stored spoken word forms. This is the phonological input lexicon. Some patients uh, show a disorder called uh, pure word deafness. People with the pure word deafness can speak, read, and write quite normally but cannot understand speech. These patients also cannot repeat speech back. However, there are a few patients with word deafness who still have intact repetition, a condition called word meaning deafness. So that's it. So other parts of this report will be reported by Ms. Eloisa. So that's for my part. Until next time.